Hi everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for this collar that you can see Melbourne wear, Melba wearing the tuxedo or French made version of here. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and hope to catch you soon. Thanks, bye. Bye. Okay, so for this project you'll need some yarn. Now I'm going to use these two here. Um, this one is at an 80% uh, acrylic 20% wool blend uh, it's probably about a four weight um, yeah so but you can use pretty much any yarn that you like if you are making the version with the fluffy border then you'll need this feather or eyelash yarn um, if you're making it with a border um, of a different yarn you totally can it's you don't have to make this feather border version you can use uh, you can even use the same yarn that you're making um, the main part of the collar with or you can use a, a different color so you can be really creative with this project so you'll need um, a yarn main color and a border color you'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn and I'm using four millimeter today <laughs> that's not focusing there we go four millimeter you'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends you'll need some scissors to snip your ends and you'll need a tape measure to take a measurement of your cat's neck circumference okay so here's two that I've made previously this one here obviously has the fluffy yarn border it's meant to be like a little tuxedo suit uh, collar this one here um, I've used the same yarn as I'm using for my main color today it's in that acrylic uh, wool blend I've used it in different colors but you can you can see you can do whatever you like with this you can add the border in a different color you could also do the border in the same color um, I've added the border up along the neck band on this one. On this one, I haven't. So you've got lots of options to customize this according to the look that you want. The you know, go for it with your creativity. The uh, sizing on this is fully customizable. You can make these larger triangles. If you use a smaller weight yarn, you would make smaller uh, triangles. You can also um, change the. Um, the length of the chain that you make initially and that will make smaller or larger triangles so whatever you like and however big your cat is perhaps the fluffiness around their neck will help you decide how big you want to make these triangles so it's a beginner project the uh, techniques that you'll need to know are how to slip knot onto your hook how to create a chain how to single crochet how to weave in your ends and how to I think that's pretty much it actually yeah and how to weave in your ends it's super simple quick project uh, looks very cute and uh, let's get started oh and I didn't mention that I'm just going to show you a technique uh, that I call the invisible stitch which just finishes off your work neatly so let's get started okay so taking your main color slip knot onto your hook in whichever method you do that and then you're going to chain 10 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 now that's where you can uh, change the size of your triangle so this is going to be uh, this part of the triangle here Okay, so it's going to show you the, the width that you're starting with on each triangle. So you can increase this number. Just make sure that you're chaining an even number. Okay, so you could increase this to 12 if you wanted larger triangles. Or you could decrease it to 8 for smaller triangles. So you can, you can play around with the sizing that you're looking for there. Of course, you can also change it by chain, chaining 10 but using either a heavier weight or a lighter weight yarn. Okay, so locate the second chain from your hook and just turn your chain over. We're going to work into these uh, these third loops. And actually, I didn't mention that technique at the beginning, but you'll just uh, for me it just makes the the project look a little bit neater. But it's not it's not vital if you just want to work into the chain as you normally would, then go ahead. But otherwise, I'm going to suggest that you work into this third loop at the back here. So. The chain has a V 
when you flip it over, it's got this third loop at the back here. So single crochet into that third loop, and then into each of those loops all the way across. So if you've come with me, if you're following what I'm making here, you'll have nine in total. So single crochet into each of those chains all the way along to finish row one. And into that last one. And that completes row one. So just a reminder, that's the top of your triangle and we're going to work down decreasing to the peak of the triangle. Okay, so chain one, turn your work. And then skip that first stitch and single crochet into the second stitch. And then once again, single crocheting in each stitch all the way along your row two. And essentially, we're just going to repeat row two until we have one stitch left. So we're going to be decreasing by one stitch in each row with that first stitch that we're skipping. So that's row two. Chain one and turn. So I'll just run through this third row with you and then I'll leave you to finish your triangle. So skip that first stitch, single crochet into the second stitch, and then one in each stitch all the way along. So keep repeating that until you reach one stitch left and I'll, I'll rejoin you and we'll finish off the triangle together. Okay, so I've got one stitch left. So chain one and turn. And then just to finish off the peak of your triangle, slip stitch into the side of the triangle. Not into the stitch, but just into the side of the triangle. Might be a little bit tricky to get it in there, but that will just give you a peak and then yarn over and pull through. And snip off your end. Please excuse the camera moving, Melba is up on my table. Okay, so there we go. So that's one triangle done. Now you'll just repeat, of course, and make another triangle. So I'll let you go ahead and repeat that process and make your second triangle. And I'll come back once I've done the same. Okay, so now we're going to attach a neckband to these two triangles. So take your, your main colour yarn and attach onto one of the corners of the triangle. So how I do that is I just insert my hook, pull through a loop, and then I chain one. Okay, so what you can do here, and just pull that tight. So what you can do here is you can work in your tails, which is definitely what I'm going to do. I might just shorten that one. You can just weave them in at the end. So if you don't like working in your tails, then just weave them in at the end. But I'm going to work mine in now. So work back a single crochet back into that same space that you have tied onto. Might be a little bit tight in there, but just in my yarn splits, there we go. So just work a single crochet back into that same space. And then you're just going to single crochet along the top of your triangle. And it looks like you're working into stitches because we worked into the third loop of that foundation chain, but you're actually working into the other two loops of the chain. So just work across the top of that triangle, first triangle, all the way along. And again, I apologize for the camera moving, Melba is here. And final stitch along the top there. Now you can snip off the excess of the those tail ends. Just be careful you don't snip your working end. And then we're going to bring in the second triangle. So chain one here. 
and then start up on the actually let's work on the other side so I can work in the tail and then do the exact same thing working your single crochets along the top of the next triangle working in your tail if you want to and all the way across now from here you'll need to know the circumference of your cat's neck so for Melba her neck circumference is around 23 and a half centimeters and for her proportions I need to leave about a centimeter and a half to get it over top of her head so work out how much you need to leave so it will vary you're probably leaving anywhere between one and three centimeters leeway um, to allow that you know allow it to slip over your cat's head so take your neck circumference and then add anywhere between one and three centimeters so maybe one centimeter for a cat who has a larger neck in proportion to the width of their head or the opposite for a cat who has a wider head and a smaller neck so you would probably have to add around three centimeters up to three centimeters for Melbourne I add about a centimeter and a half so if I go up to about 25 maximum 26 26 centimeters I'm going to get that over her head easily now I'll just snip this off and then from here you'll chain up to that length that you've worked out for your neck circumference so of course you will include this length here so for example I'm going to measure from here and work up work my chain up to 25 centimeters okay so hopefully that makes sense so you obviously you need to incorporate oops you obviously need to incorporate this into your calculation so keep chaining until you reach the length that you need for your cat's neck circumference I'll meet you here back here when I've done my 25 centimeters okay so I've got the length I need for Melba's neck so I've got this length plus the rest that I've chained will be around 25 centimeters so that's going to easily slip over her head now you're going to join your chain now just make sure at this point that you don't get it twisted you're going to join your chain across to this other side just with a slip stitch okay so you've got your loop and then you're going to work single crochets once again along the top of those triangles just one in each stitch and then all the way around so you're going to work single crochets all the way around and then one in each of the chains so again once again if you want to you don't have to but if you want to working into the third loop of your chain and like I said for me that just makes it look a little bit neater you don't have to you can just work into one into each chain as you normally would so work your way around that loop that neck loop single crochets one more round or just this one round if you wanted to you could make the neck band thicker by working a um, it, actually sorry just to interrupt um, in this chain you'll have to work it into the actual chain you won't be able to work into the third loop very easily there or you would twist it so yes so you're working um, around in this loop this one final round if you wanted to make your neck band thicker you could work around another round that's absolutely fine work out if you want a thicker neck band and you could certainly do that I'm just going to do this one round of single crochets all the way around the top yes hi Melba and once again once I get to this chain I'm going to work into the back here into this third loop of the chain just like I said I just think it looks a bit neater 
So you go ahead and finish off that round. It might be your final round. You might choose to do one more. And I'll meet you back when I'm around at the beginning of my round. Okay, so I'm back around at the beginning of my, of my work here. And now you're just going to... Um, yeah, you don't usually we would yarn over pull through a loop and pull out our yarn but this time we're just going to pull out our yarn no no yarning over first and this is where we're going to finish with that invisible stitch so just snip off your tail end and if you've been working into the third loop of your chain you might notice that you've just got a little bit of uh, gap here so we're just going to finish that off neatly and even if you worked into the other sorry the just into the chain in the normal way you'll also ha uh, want to finish this off nice and neatly so we're going to essentially sew a stitch so thread your darning needle and we're going to come through both loops of our first stitch in that round okay so just come underneath both loops there and then we're going to come back down locating our last stitch come back down through the center of your last stitch now try to come out with your needle on the side where you're going to weave it in so I mean it doesn't matter if you don't you'll just have to thread through to the back at some point so essentially you've sewn a stitch okay and then and that just makes that finish nice and neat. And then you're going to weave that tail into the back here. And at this point you could weave in your other tail ends. But I'm going to, even with the ones at the bottom, I'm going to work those in with my border. So you do it however works for you. If you prefer to have your tail ends worked in before you start the border then go ahead and do those now so I'm just weaving this one into the back here and then I'll go back again so just don't go back exactly where you've come obviously you want to make that nice and secure and I think that will do for me let's snip off the, the excess and there you have the basic part of your collar finished. So if you're going to come along and add a border, and again it's, it's optional, you don't have to add the border. Take your eyelash yarn or whichever you're using for your border. And we're just going to tie on to one of the, these corners here. So I'm going to tie on into this corner here. So just do the same as you did before, insert your hook pull up a loop and then chain one pull that nice and tight and then you're just going to place single crochets so go back into that same stitch where you've pulled up a loop and just place evenly spaced single crochets around the border of your triangles Now I could have worked in that tail end but I didn't this time so I'll just go back and I'll weave it in at the end. So just evenly spaced. Now the, approximately they'll be at the, at the sides of each row. And then at this peak end here just make sure that you put a couple of stitches into that peak end. So getting my hook in there. So just so you turn the corner nice and smoothly just make sure you put two stitches into that top end and again here's Melba and it's a little bit tricky with this fluffy yarn but two stitches in there and then you'll start working up the other side you might work your tail in as I'm going to do and then you'll just do the same, those evenly spaced single crochets, one at the end of each row.
along. So I'm going to keep going. And obviously here you'll place a single crochet in the center here. And then you'll work up until you come back to this other side. Now with this feather yarn, I'm not going to add a feather. Oh, will I? Yeah, no, I, 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 I'll see. <laughs> I'm a little bit like that. I uh, am a bit spontaneous. So maybe I'll add one around here. We'll see how I go. But I'm going to come back here and I'll meet you. I'll meet you back. I'll just see how it's looking and think about the look that I want. So uh, yeah, I may add, you could add the border all the way up around the neckband like I did on that other one I showed you. Or you can, and or, you can work the border in the center space as well. But I'm going to, I'll meet you when I get back here. Okay, just to come back quickly to you, um, just to show you what I tend to do, it's not super obvious where you place your stitches in that center part there. I tend to just place one into that chain space and then keep working down the other side. So just work out how it looks neat for your work. Like I said, just evenly spaced so it looks neat along the border there. So I'll keep going and I'll be back soon. Okay, I'm back here. Now I could stop here, but what I think I'm going to do uh, is to, I'm going to border the whole thing. So I'm going to do my border all the way along here and I'm going to do it on the inside too with this fluffy pink one. So just if you want to come along with me, you just simply keep going, placing one single crochet in each stitch around your border, around your edge of your work. So here I'm working into my chain, into the other two loops of my chain. So if you're using this, uh, this fluffy yarn, this feather yarn, it's very forgiving. So it helps you cover the chain really well. So if you were using the fluffy yarn, you don't really need to work into that third loop. It just, when you're not bordering it, it just, I don't know if you can see there. Hi, Melba. It just makes it a little bit neater. But if you're covering it with this feather yarn, you, you wouldn't need to. But maybe if you were doing a border on with um, just a, you know, a non, a non feather yarn, you might want to do this because it just makes it look a little bit neater. So I'm going to keep going and I'll finish up this border and then I'm, when I get round to this point here I'm going to have to tie off and then reattach for my center point here. So I'll be back once I reach here. Okay so I'm back around at the beginning so I'm just going to slip stitch to join that border, pull out my end and snip off. And then I'll weave in those tail ends at the end. And because I'm going to keep going with this particular one, I'll just find a place to tie on. I might tie on where I did that invisible stitch. So just tie on as you did before. And then you'll work your way around the inside of the neckband and this time I'll remember to work in my end. So back into that space where you tied on and then one in each one in each stitch all the way around that inner part of the neckband. It's getting very fluffy in here. Not easy to see the stitches. Okay, so work your way all the way around the inside of your neckband and I'll come back once I'm round to the other side. Okay, so finished around the inner border, so I'm just going to slip stitch to join and pull through. And then all that's left for me here now is weaving in my ends, so I'm going to do that off camera. So go ahead, weave in your ends. So you can see this is a real fluffy version of this collar. <laughs> it 
<laughs> it's kind of cute. So I'll be back in a moment. I'm just going to uh, weave in these ends and I'll be right back. Okay, so there's my very fluffy version of this collar completed. I've woven in all my ends. And as you can see, you can tailor this to um, whatever, you know, however you want this to look. I've given you a basic pattern that you can uh, add different elements to. And you can, yeah, you can pretty much make it your own. So I'd love to see what you come up with. Uh, you can send those photos along to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. And as always, I'd love to see photos of your cat. I'd love to see what you've, you've come up with uh, with regards to the yarn that you've used, how you've adapted this to suit your own uh, creativity. So if you like this tutorial, please like, share and subscribe. Equally, if you don't like it, please let me know in the comments. Uh, any feedback is most, most appreciated so I can keep improving these videos. Um, yeah, thanks so much for being here and hope to catch you soon. Bye like share and subscribe and hope to catch you soon <laughs> she's off <sighs> she can see treats hey Melba well she can see the clicker and she knows that it's connected to treats which is good it means training is working I know, sweetie. I know. I can do it. <laughs> this might be tricky today. Let's see. Remember, you want, don't want to film today? Really? You mad about it? Okay. Thanks very much. Bye. Good girl. Good stuff.